Sound like me? What? That intro. Is that you? No. But does it sound like me? No. Not at all. Well, that's good to know. I would have never have guessed. I paid someone a lot of money to get that done. Well, you know, everything is a transaction. Hey, Dom. Yeah. <laughs> um, I haven't had a coffee for five days. I'm sad. Five days. I'm sad. Oh, you might not be in the shot anymore. What do you mean? Because you moved. I'm sat right. up. Oh, no. What happened? I have to check if you're in the shot. Dude, I'm like, oh, did you think I was going to slouch the whole yes. movie? Yes. Oh, movie. This is a movie now. It's a movie now. No. Dude, yeah, I'm okay. You're all right. You're just in it. What do you mean I'm you're just right. in it? There's a little top of your head still in it, just. A little top. I need my... Um, I'm the same height as you. Oh. Don't slouch deliberately. Slunch. Slunch. Uh, yeah, five days, no coffee. I haven't seen any improvement to my sleep yet. And you're sad? Yeah, I really am. Are I you like, really? Yeah, I like it. Yeah, but... Yeah, but I, I'm clearly pretty desperate, so... For sleep? Yeah. So you're trying shit out? Well, I'm trying... I'm not... Yeah. 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 Try- like you're trying stuff? Yeah. Uh, um, do you take prescription drugs to try and help you sleep? No, I have never have. Um, Never have. No, no. <laughs> no, you say it. No. Why? Well, I, no, yeah. like, no. I don't like <sighs> prescription y things for things like that. I mean, now, it's not you and I the other day. Uh, okay. Is it? You and I the other day spoke about rest of it. Yes. Have you tried that? No. That's just over the counter. Well, I haven't tried that. So it's not prescription. Right. Although you're prescribing it now, <laughs> Dr. Bradshaw. Sounds like uh, maybe someone from Days of Our Lives or something. Oh, yeah. Dr. Matt Although Bradshaw. I wouldn't be Matt, no, I'd be Rick, wouldn't I? I'd be Rick Bradshaw. No, you'd be Brad Rickshaw. Brad Rickshaw? Yeah. No, surely I'd be in China. <laughs> I'd be Vlad. <laughs> Vlad Rickshaw. What's going on I with you? I'm a special rat. Have you done anything? Has anywhere annoyed you recently? <laughs> So, let me ask you this question. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, are you still working on the 3rd of February? Uh, I don't know what day that is. That's a Saturday. We've got a wedding during the day. Yes, and I... then you have a wedding that night. Is yes, that still happening? Are they still, still getting married? Uh, I believe so. Okay, that's right. Yeah. What about the 24th of February? Um, it's a Saturday. Yep. I, I, don't, no, I don't know. Look that up. Because right you might have a gig. Ah. Oh. Why? Because did you have a, um, a, a miscommunication with a member of the band that plays the same instrument as I do? No. no oh, no, that's no. good. Oh, good. No, no, nothing like that. Oh, no, no. Minute. I um. I was actually was worried for a second there. Were you? Yeah. Well, I don't. Not more. More. More over that. You might have had an altercation with someone that you care about. No, God, yeah. no. No, no, nothing like that. No, I've had an altercation with someone I don't care about. Oh, cool. um, <laughs> uh, how to... Are we ever going to find out what this altercation is? Was? N- and Probably not on here. Okay. But what I will say is that... Remember how... Okay, so we're doing this on a Sunday evening yes. after my solo Dudagala gig. That's correct. And after your solo Brandon gig. Yes. Brandon Hotel gig in Carlton North. And we don't have, neither of us have to go and do another gig. No, tonight. but often, yes. these days, yes. you do have to go and do another gig. Yes. It was often a gig that I often had to go to also. Yes. And then somebody at the establishment... Really liked your fill-in. Really liked my fill-in. And... 
what was funny is they liked your fill-in of the gig that you book, that you weren't available for, and because I booked direct with that particular place, they don't want to book me with anyone else but that other person anymore. Mm. So Don, when we book you, we want, we want you to play with this person. Yeah, okay. So makes, makes it hard. Yes. That very same person that liked your act. Yes. Stuck his head in at the gig last night. And uh, didn't like. No, no, your not, act? no, no. Just well, yeah, no, yeah. Did yeah, didn't like my act. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, where am I going with this? Um, I've got gigs booked at that venue on those particular dates and I'm going to call them tomorrow and say I don't want them. Okay, cool. Because what's the fucking point? Book the act you want, not the act you think you want and then tell them to be what you actually want them to be once they get there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Fucking annoyed. Yeah, fair enough. And so, well, so someone, so someone spoke to you during, during the, the gig, yeah, in the middle of a set about what you were playing and how it was being played. Whoa! Yeah, yeah. Have you got like a like a backbeat kind of thing, like a like a uh, like a beatboxy kind of thing that you can do? Because this venue's about pub rock on a Saturday night, is it? Hmm. News to me. Okay. Yeah, that's interesting given who, other people who play there on a Saturday night don't have a... Don't even. Don't do it. <laughs> and the thing is, last night was booked as the Matt Bradshaw duo. Yeah. I could have brought... Anyone you want. Anyone I want. As I should be able to if it's the, the Dom Italiano duo, but and, now I'm not allowed to. And I chose to bring the person I wanted to bring. Yep. And he's fucking great. Yep. And people are up and dancing and... Anyway, all, the, all those parameters covered. That's fine. But also, if you tell me what you want, I'll fucking bring in what you want. Yeah. Don't tell me two-thirds of the way through the night. Yeah. And also, I'm actually not prepared to bring in what you want <laughs> for the next two gigs in a book there. Because it just... Yeah, it's, I understand. Because if all of a sudden someone tells me that a, an acoustic gig has to be pub rock for three hours. I actually don't want it. Yeah, fair enough. I don't want to do it. Yeah. Dumb. It's a weird conversation to have in the middle of everyone, isn't it? Sorry about that. No, but I mean, you know, part, clearly a big part of what we do on this podcast is talk about what we do with our lives and how we earn our living is uh, by playing music. But I mean, that one of the interesting um, things that happens when you've got enough people between the chain of uh, command is that, you know, with gigs is the Chinese whispers of it all, which is... It's exactly the conversation if, I was if having someone, between sets here tonight. Yeah, if someone books you, if you get booked for something, that person tells you what you're booked for, then if you rock up and somebody says, this is what we want, it's like, hang on, I should have been told that before, and if I had been told before, I would have prepared for it, or... More importantly, I would have said, actually, if you want Xavier Ruddy kind of cruisy, you know, surf coast chill out stuff for your wedding, don't book me. I will recommend five guys who can do that yeah, yeah, really yeah. well. Spot on. Right. But um, the whoever, if you book me direct or more importantly, if some, an agent's booked me, they should have told me and you that on the way. Uh, the other thing for me as well is that this particular venue I as a as a booking agent I book acts into yeah. and in the last two months two of those acts have been canned yeah. with the only explanation being we love these guys we don't think they're suited to this place now me having actually done this venue on a Saturday night yeah. now I realise that's exactly what they're saying they've got this one person that says no no we want boom 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 all night yeah. from an acoustic act in a bar surrounded by people what? playing games. Yes. <laughs> Tell me what you want, what you really, really want, <laughs> I'll fucking give it to you. Yeah, yeah. Don't ask for stuff 
and then in the middle of a gig tell me it's not suitable yeah when I've been playing there for fucking 10 years yeah oh yeah it's frustrating uh, I'm with you um <sighs> anyway anyway so um, you're about to have a week off <laughs> I am I was going to ask how your early gig was today oh it was awesome yeah yeah, yeah. I'm uh, great people you know it's crazy I can I either get to play exactly what I want or exactly what people ask for which is never the you know the lowest common denominator Saturday night stuff like it's Sundays, Sundays, something happens. I think it's the people who go out and party on Saturday night are so wasted and trash they can't leave the house on Sunday. So that's when the nice, it's like my kind of people end up going out. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't mind playing the other stuff. I don't mind it. If there's people in the room. I played it all last night. It was great fun. We had a ball. It was a wedding. Yeah. It was balls to the wall all night. It was really good fun. And, no everyone, and you are there to facilitate yeah, people no problem. having a good time. Yeah. That's if it was like if every gig was like that all the time, and admittedly for a lot of musicians, every gig is like that all the time because they do two gigs a week, a Friday and Saturday night. Yeah. They don't get to do a, a lovely Saturday afternoon or Sunday afternoon gig or a cruisy Friday after work drinks kind of thing, where you get to be you get to be a musician as opposed to a shouty jukebox. Because I think that's uh, yeah. often or you get to just be lazy sit in the corner and just fucking noodle away and do fuck all because I see those guys too man yeah I don't feel like I, 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 I'm sure that's what some people do I don't feel like that's what I do when I get a chance to no, <laughs> no, no, no um, I you. but yeah uh, I see I see there's potential for that mm. a lot of the gigs I do and a lot of the gigs I book are quite mainstream keep the people happy kind of gigs absolutely as a and a lot of the people that approach me to book them are the guys that do the other gigs and they walk into the the room full of people let's keep it up vibe and they don't know what to do with that uh, okay sure and they continue to do yeah the other thing and that's not and it's what not they, suitable because it's, it's not yeah yeah that's not what the gig is yeah I guess it? it's like kind of what I was getting at is it's great to have the opportunity to um, to do a variety of venues and different types of work so that it isn't it isn't working at the bank all day you know what I mean it's not it's not Friday Saturday night yeah let's party I don't, like I love those gigs they're heaps of fun if that's all I did it would be work yeah yeah Spot the on. fact is I get to do other stuff and I get to be I get to play in front of different types of people and different crowds who, and even the same types of people who are out for a different reason. Yeah. You know, so if they're there on a, if they're there at five o'clock on a Friday, it's not like they don't behave the same way as they are at midnight on a Saturday. Uh, it's just how people are. So I do. Yeah. I appreciate that I get to do different stuff. I think maybe what I've been uh, implicitly balking against for years at this particular place it in every outlet at this yeah. particular place is that uh, it's ridiculous to think that although you won't be given this is the list of songs you need to play here yeah. that actually that's what they want they're not interested in stuff that's <sighs> out of the box yeah I, I think there's an element of I mean, I wasn't there yesterday, obviously, but um, there is also, well, not just at this place, but at, at other places too, um, the people who are managing or coming up to you to have those conversations have got absolutely no connection to the people who are actually in the room. Correct. It's like, if you want to create this kind of vibe or that kind of vibe, Book stuff that works, that does that, right? Don't put stuff that does this here. And more to the point, if there are these kind of people in the room, you just absolutely have to tell the actor flat out, say, we're not allowed to play what you want us to play. 
Yeah. Because the thing is, like, people come up and they say, do you know this song? And I, I've been in, in particular venues to say, do you know this song? And like, you know, there's a screen behind us playing the football, right? And there's everyone, in, every, there's 100 people in the room and everyone's over 40, right? And we've been told to play post-2006 upbeat pop. You're like, that's Justin Bieber. That's that kind of stuff. Yep. Bruno Mars. And they go, do you, play, do you know Holy Grail? Yep, not allowed to play it. Huh. And so they leave. And it's like, do you want people, do you want the people in the room to, that are actually there at the time to engage and stay and buy booze? Right? Or do you want to attract people who aren't in the room and are not going to get there until 11 o'clock anyway? Because that, uh, that demographic who wants that just doesn't That's right. go at that time. They don't. Day. Absolutely. And don't. if you want people like that in the room, don't put the footy on. Don't put the cricket on. Like you know, well, don't advertise yourself as being a sports bar. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, and that's where that's where there's a huge disconnect between people who manage and run places like that and and the performers, but also mainly the managers and the punters, the people who are in the space. Yeah. Like if you know, if you want people to pay twelve dollars fifty for a Corona, they're the people who want the kind of music that they ask for and if you play it for them they'll stay and buy $12.50 Coronas mm. but if you don't play the music they want they'll fuck off it's somewhere else fucking madness yeah and it's and it's been an ongoing narrative between you and I for many years I know which yeah. just seems ridiculous why would we just keep revisiting it but it's fresh in my mind from last night it's less than 24 hours old yeah. this experience it's still, it's still seething and as well it is yeah. and, and it's something I know I have to deal with tomorrow Yeah, and I'm still grappling with how I'm going to deal with it and I was chatting with friends of mine downstairs about it. Uh, the clear and obvious way to say is, to, to deal with it, is to say to the, the, the person who is the conduit for these gig bookings is to say thanks but no thanks and yeah. just be gracious about it. But the part of me that wants control of my own fucking destiny and <laughs> life and the, 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 the fucking alpha male bit of me wants to say thanks but no thanks and this is fucking why <sighs> and it doesn't actually serve any real purpose other than to make myself feel better I mean the real solution is to say right now if, is to say right we all need to have a meeting <laughs> we all need to have a meeting you need to say this is what we want this is why and then I need to be able to counter that with do you do understand why we do what we do and do you want us to do this because it feels like they don't they don't understand what, what we do as well they just don't get it they they yeah. don't, and and in, I mean this happens in many walks of life, of course, is they don't get it because they don't feel like they need to. They don't have a need to understand, and so they don't bother. Yeah, like, uh, this is yeah, what I want. Sure. Yeah. I mean, my whole sigh there was about, oh, really? I'm sure if you've got a job, you care about it enough to. But then again, uh, yeah, I, yeah, I don't mean they don't care about their job. But they don't care about the way it's manifest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> How about that? I know. Yeah. This pod remember this when this podcast was entertaining? Oh, well look, um Well I mean, you know, to answer that question, yeah, look, I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I do. it was last time. Well oh, I don't sorry, I don't know I don't know if it ever has been entertaining other than <gasps> uh, for me, in my perception of it, it's I think we're pretty candid about you know what's going on in our life. Sometimes we're pretty we can be lighthearted and funny and jovial. We probably will be in about three seconds' time. See, um, <laughs> but um, one of the things that is implicit in good entertainment is when there's the human element of of real life experience comes through. So, mm. um, you yeah, sometimes so. when you when you have a, a fucker of a day at work and you get to express it, the people who are listening or watching are going, yeah, I've had a fuck over day at work too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't work, I'm not a muso, Matt, but I know what it's like to work with someone who just doesn't get what I do and thinks that I can just do this. And, you know, I mean, I, I think that anyone who listens to this or watches this absolutely understands that. Yeah. Even probably more than we do. <laughs> because, you know, yes. they have 
they have actual workmates and bosses that they yeah, see yeah, yeah, five days a week as opposed to us who see different people all the time. Yeah. And it certainly makes me very grateful for gigs like I did today, where it is just the owner and the, the managers don't question my decisions about what I'm playing and why I'm playing it and how I'm interacting with everyone because they trust me. Yeah. They, they know that I've got the best interests of the venue and the punters well, and the people who are in the room at that stuff. point in time. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah, they get that I've got those, yeah. those things at the core of what I'm trying to do. Yeah, you don't, people like us don't have hundreds and hundreds of songs in our repertoire to avoid playing what people want to hear. Yeah. We have, we have that much repertoire so that people get specifically what they want to hear. Yeah. Um, and if I was to walk into a venue, if I was to walk into a venue as a booking person and the manager was to say, these are the 40 songs we want our acts to play, I would book acts in there that play, play those it. songs. Yeah. I wouldn't do it. Yeah. Because I don't mind playing Holy Grail when someone asks for it. And I don't mind playing Jesse's Guy. I don't mind playing 500 Miles. But I don't want it all night every night yeah and on it, the venue that you're talking about I know that whenever I, whenever I, I'm in there or you're in there the guys at the bar go oh, they always say oh, I was so glad you're here it's not the same old shit fuck me you know um, which is not it's not disparaging for the other people who play there because they're really good at what they do they just sure. they just do that that's what they you know that's their thing they're good at it they play yeah. the same you know 40 out of 60 possible songs that they have that's right for that place mm. um, so yeah I don't understand yep. Reese and I sounded good last night yeah like Reese sang really well and played beautifully and it was it was good yeah so that was but that wasn't uh, but that wasn't considered that's well, annoying isn't it yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. dumb dumb <laughs> dumb other than that, you're about to go on holiday. I am. Yes. Where are you going? I'm going to Thailand. I've never been there. You've certainly dead. never been there. Yeah, you have. No, I haven't. Did you kiss a ginger yesterday? Uh, no, it was a kiss a ginger day. Dude, dude I fucking tagged you. Uh, I didn't see it. Sorry. It's bullshit. Yeah, technology, imagine. Uh, <sighs> I heard that it was coming up. <laughs> uh, you think I would have been all over that, given my proclivity for... Wanting to kiss gingers. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. Another missed opportunity. So, Story of my life. Yeah, I bought you a cat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. I did... I, I, oh. I did go to a school with a girl named Tabitha, but she wasn't ginger. Was, <laughs> oh, was she Tabby? <laughs> no, she wasn't. She wasn't Tabby either. Huh. But there's, a, there's gingers in Tabbies, aren't they? They're like the, the mix. Yeah. Yeah. Is it what they are? I don't know. I don't, I don't care. They're cats. Hey! What? That'd be rude. It's just saying. Be rude about cats. That's a big spike in yeah. the audio. <laughs> we both looked over and went. Yeah, well. Oh, well. What are you going to do about it? So, how long are you in Thailand for? Uh, seven nights. Nice. Have you got plans? Um. Not really. Is there like a fun water park like there is in Bali? There is. Cool. Do that. Yeah, best. I love those okay. things. Water parks are my favourite thing. My favourite place in Australia is Went Wild. <laughs> There's a. Um, it's a water park, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> There's a water slide at the hotel. Oh, what? Around the hotel? Yeah. Well, can you get in on like floor five and then. I'm not sure how it works. Oh, that's exciting. I'm looking forward but to yeah. hearing about that. Yeah. So that'd be good. Cool. Yeah, uh, the, um, there's a, <laughs> epitome of first world problems. There's an enormous amount of stress that goes into getting prepared to be able to go away and have a week off when you are self-employed. Yes, yeah. There's a lot of shit that needs to get done and Yeah, I think that's that why to... um, in the past, my experience of going away for seven weeks was like well, actually a lot easier than going away for a week. Because when you go away for a long period of time, 
there's a lot of stuff you just have to let go of completely because you go, that's just, that is, that's just too much to like now have to worry about. But a week you go, well, I actually need to, I'm going to be back in a week to deal with all that, so I better fucking set it up for when I leave. The only time in my life I had six weeks in a row off since I became a professional user, the only time in my life I had that period of time off, I came back to one gig a week. Yeah, but you ended up with gigs up your wazoo in three weeks' time. I remember that. You were uh, all stressed about it. I remember it. I fucking oath I was stressed about yeah. it. I hustled like a bastard. Yeah, and you were fine because you're Matt Bradshaw. Everyone wants to book you. No, I had no. Sammy Vandenberg really helped me out there. Well, that's my point. Sammy Vandenberg really wants to book you. <laughs> no, no, I had a lot of... I mean, I hustled. I can't, I, yeah. Did really, I rant and rave a couple of episodes ago about how amazing his version of Message in a Bottle was? Yeah. I did. I'm still getting over it. It's, uh, it was so good. Wow. Yeah, it wow. was It was so good. Yeah. It was, it, He's a talented man. I was saying to um, the guys downstairs when we were waiting for you to finish, fucking finally you did. Um, <laughs> Matt, just two more songs, Bradshaw. <laughs> At this gig. And that's actually what happens at gigs like this, where you you have the freedom to play for the people who are there, and you always you always give more. Whereas at that other place, you're like, no, oh, I might cut the last verse out of this song because we're supposed to finish in a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah red, red. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet home alibi. <laughs> <laughs> Too true. Um, we were just saying, like I was saying, how much I like to be in the audience. Like I, do, I like I, I'm such a music fan. That I love watching people play. But, you know, that's a, if they're good. Um, but I, it's because I just don't get to see people play that much. When I get to, I'm like, this is the best. I get to see someone else play. It's awesome. I don't know how I feel sitting next to you. Oh, well, there you go. I don't mean now. Yeah, of course I'm not. I'm not doing anything useful right now. Just making sure. The thing doesn't crash. The thing being the computer and yes. the audio. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Just letting the listeners know what I meant about the thing crashing. Put it on. A little yeah. peek behind the curtain. Oof. Dr. Oz. <laughs> mm-hmm. Wizard? Oz? Dr. Wizard. All right, sorry. Dr. Oz is that guy that sells wacky, bloody medicines on... I don't know what Dr. Oz does. Yeah, he's a, he's a wacky doctor that sells potions and medicines on late-night cable TV. Is he? Yeah. Huh. Yeah, and he looks like... It must be something I've heard. Funnily enough, he looks known. like Willem Dafoe, who played... Oh, no. ...the Dr. Oz on, in uh, Spider-Man with Tobey Maguire. He looks a lot like him. Is that the first Spider-Man? The, yes. The one you and I went to see at the cinema that yes. I hated and you loved? Yeah, but I loved it because... It was Kirsten c- cinema. No, because Kirsten Dunst was a redhead. Oh, dude. So funny. How 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 could she even get better? Was that the Upside Down Kiss film? Yes. No. How could she even get better? They dyed her hair red. Amazing. I fucking don't know who anyone is. Yeah. Which one does she look like? <laughs> she looks like Kirsten Dunst. I think you were right. Yeah. I don't know. Who she, you, speaking I don't of know Upside Down, is. actually, that's funny. Um, Diana she's Ross. in a film called Upside Down. I'm sure it's called Upside Down. Um, amazing movie. You would absolutely love it. Um, it's got, also got the Irish kid who was in... Uh, Wait! Across the Universe. Wait. Have you seen Across the Universe? No. That's the one that's that... That's why God... <laughs> that's why God made the movie. <laughs> um, now you can talk about so movies. So, it, it's sort of... This movie's based on an alternative... In an alternative world where um, the... It's funny. It's kind of like a leasing where the rich people live on this world and the poor people live on this world, and you can see the other world like it's upside down. So these two, this this guy and this girl meet when they're kids, when they both climb the mountain, they get to the top of the mountain, they can almost touch each other, but they're up they're upside down. So they talk and they can become friends. The fuck? And because they're from different, different I want to see this. Yeah, it's amazing because they're from different worlds. That they're they're, they're gravity pulls him towards their world. So what happens is he, um, I'm not going to give the whole plot away, but effectively as their kids, they fall in love and they get separated and he thinks she, he thinks she's dead, right? And then he realises she's not. So he pretends to have invented 
um, this thing so he can take it to the to the other world, right? And they're still upside down, right? But then he puts weights and magnets and all stuff like in his clothing so he can pretend to be in her world. Because if he was to go into her world, he would fall down. Huh. It's fucking awesome. It's I've never this heard incredible of this. love story. But she she ends up having amnesia, so she doesn't recognise. Okay, okay, him. okay. Oh my god, it's so gone good. too far yeah, now. I'm sure it's called Upside Down. I hope it is. Good, quick, Google it. All right. Well, right. Okay. Um, I highly recommend it. Have you watched any of those films I've given to you yet? No, I am. Um, Either of them? No, I say no. I haven't say any of them. I've been, all those um, films I made for you. I haven't because I've been doing other things. What have you been doing? Well, I've been working out how to do live recordings of me singing my own songs and then putting the lyrics over the top in final cut. That's pretty easy. Well, it was hard for me. I'm not Upside good at down. technology. 2012. Tim Sturgis. Tim Sturgis, that's him. Jim Sturgis, not Tim. That's weird. Sorry, you said Jim, I said Tim. On Timothy Spall. Yeah, he's good in it too. He's good in... Yeah. He's good. good actor. Good actor. Jim Sturgis. <sighs> uh, yeah, that's about all. I haven't had a chance. I do want to see those things. I'll let you know when I do. Okay. Mm. Anything else? Nah. Nah? I think I'm good for now. All right. Well, um, <laughs> hope you have a wonderful holiday. Um, I've never been to Thailand, so... I'll be on holiday when this comes out, won't I? Yeah, well, you'll be on your way back. Because this is for that Thursday. Oh, shh. Shit and corruption, Batman. Yeah. Um, okay. Maybe we can do one while I'm away. Uh, an episode? Yep. Yeah, okay, I was just checking you were referring to that. <laughs> um, we, we, we could. Yeah, we could, we could uh, Skype. Have one of those podcasts where like one of us sounds like we're in another world. <laughs> it's upside down. Yeah. yeah. Well, you will be in Thailand. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, thanks, Ben. Yeah. Thanks. Should be good. Yeah, I hope you have a lovely time. I never feel like I need a holiday. No. And that's why, you know, I when, I, when I talk to people about, you know, like they say, fuck, you work really hard. You know, you must, it's like, mm. Do you say what I say? It's like, I don't work hard. I just work often. Uh, no, I just say yeah. that it's not, it's not I worked real, hard last night. It's not a real job. Like, it's... Well, we like it. <laughs> Apart yeah. from when we and have yes, to deal a, with... Like, there's a lot of... <laughs> different managers uh, who treat us like... There's a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff, and, you know, we have to learn songs, and there's all the bullshit, and, you know, you're being uh-huh. self-employed, so you have to invoice, and you have to pay people, and all the, all the stuff that goes along with that. But it's still not a real job. Yeah. Like I let still half get a world up, away. You... I don't know what that is. That Oasis song that someone asked for on Wednesday. Oh, hey, she'll, I know what that She'll is. never come back, but... No, she won't. Uh, I'll is know it, it if she does. Yeah, it's beautiful. Okay, great. I, feel, I, find, I, I find Oasis a really perplexing band where the two main characters, I realise they're not actors, although I think they kind of are, that they are this band that behaves so kind of deplorably in public, yet their music is beautiful and introspective I mean I've got some rocking songs but yeah no, it's spot on though their ballads are you know their, their songs are, are great and they're very musical the lyrics are quite yep they're not the average pop band but they just come across as just <laughs> what's weird to me is they're so obviously it's everyone knows they're influenced by the Beatles yeah yeah. Production wise, as, as well, well as songwriting yeah, yeah. wise. Uh, particularly that Wonderwall record, whatever that is. But even bits of their other stuff that are, are all but ripped off of Beatles songs. Yeah, it's songs. beyond homage, isn't it? It's it just, is. It's just absolute, yeah. And yet they clearly always had the ability to write stuff that was totally original. Yeah. And I, I think that's. I do think that's, uh, well, how do I say this without being a wanker? Mm-hmm. I think, I don't know if I'm going to be able to, so I'm just going to say we'll see. I, I think that is the mark of um, a good creator, is that they understand the, the forum that they're working in and they take enough of it 
to make it familiar to the audience and even to the point where I mean if you're going to rip any band off and make stuff sound like anyone make it sound like the why not make it sound like the Beatles you know and then add your bit of thing there's the opposite act like a Jeff Buckley where we just absolutely refuse to release anything unless it that sounded unless it sounded completely <clears throat> new and different and then okay. every single thing had to be completely different from the next thing um, which I you know also have great respect for but I, I think there's it's almost like the idea of when you go see a, you go see a movie right and it might be a completely original kind of movie but it, it's got a script, it needs lights, it has cameras, it's got to have angles, it's got, it's got to have all the stuff that all love the movies have as well. So how much of it do you try and make completely different and how much do you go, well actually a song has to have these things, a song has to have these things, a song has to have these things. Mm. The other stuff we can go bananas with. And I use Jeff Buckley as, as an example, you know, uh, Last Goodbye has one of the greatest choruses of any song ever written and it's in there once yeah you know, you know what I mean it's yep um, so you, you kind of go there's almost the point where you go wouldn't you just put that in again and then you listen to that song and go well, why would why would you because the yeah. next section's fucking incredible too okay um, whereas Oasis for example yep some of their songs could be other other things but they, they, they do it so well that you go, ah, oh, it could be this. It's yep. so good, it could be this. Um, yeah, I think they just do it. I think they're just real smart about it. Mm. Yeah. I haven't heard of his, any of his new solo stuff. I like BDI. I've not, I'm, I don't know at yeah, all. Yeah, I, heard any of his stuff. Uh, I, I didn't buy the album, yeah. but um, four or five songs I heard off it. Yeah. <laughs> Good, like he's a good writer. Yeah, he's a good writer. Yeah, real good writer, good player, solid player. He's not a guitarist. No, he but just, he's you know he plays he plays the things he does well. Yeah, um, that's what you need. I'll tell you what, I've heard a lot of stuff recently, and you know, the the great wondrous Spotify just randomly throwing music at you, which is like, oh, this song's great, and then some fucking idiot plays a guitar solo, it's just completely incompetent and noisy, and you go, doesn't the rest I of think the that's my new single. Incompetent and noisy, or completely incompetent and noisy. No, I just I think whatever you heard was probably it. I just well, I just sit there going, God, doesn't the rest of the, doesn't the rest of the band hear that? <gasps> it's a really good song and just yeah. I can't believe you heard anything that's new that's got a guitar solo in it. Oh well, not new that's poppy radio-ish, but like just the stuff that pops up on my suggested listening is mm. of that ilk. Mm. Mm. Dear. Oh, sorry, Ilk. Yes. Okay. Ilk. Yeah. Should we go away from this Yes, place? we moose get out of here. Oh, yeah. well done. Yeah. Okay, that's good. <laughs> Watermelon? Antelope? Are we going now? All right, yeah. bye. Thanks, everyone, for listening to our um, podcast. Oh, my God. Lamentations. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like lamingtons? Uh, I think they'd be better without coconut sprinkled on the outside. Me too. Yeah. And without the cake in the middle. You mean just chocolate and jam? Yep. Yeah, okay. Is there jam? Yeah. Oh, cake, jam, chocolate. Yeah. Yeah. Just chocolate and jam. Thanks very much. Okay. What would that be called? I'm chocolate. He's jam. Uh, jam. Oh, jam. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is hard. Ch- uh, we'll see you Choc. in a few weeks, eh? Chock. Chock. Chocolate. Jacklet. This, um, <laughs> this whole episode is an outtake. <laughs> Including the last 28 seconds. <laughs> my whole life is an outtake, in fact. My life is a DVD and extra. And my middle name is Jacklet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, little Jack. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> that's what I meant. Can we stop now? I need to break wind. <laughs> <laughs> See ya.